All right, folks, today we're going to talk about how to take the residual limb from a scan of a patient and create a socket that is patient-specific to them from that 3D scan. So the first thing we're going to do is use the selection tool in order to sort of select the areas over which the prosthetic socket will live or will be on the patient. Uh, full disclosure, I have no medical training, um, but I, my understanding is that the from talking to certified prosthetists and orthotists or CPOs, is that the method by which you do these selections is sort of universal. And so even if you're maybe going a little bit higher on the knee here, or lower on the knee as the case may be, the tools that we're using in this video are still relevant. And so that's why I'm making this video. All right, so back, back, to, uh, back to what we were doing. Sort of selecting these areas, you know, you want the patient to be able to bend their knee so you want to enable them to have a gap such that when they bend their knee, they're not running into the socket. We're going to expand our selection tool at the bottom over here to sort of capture all of this area rather rapidly. And then if you hold down control when you're using the selection tool and then you click, you actually can remove material. So here's an example of me adding material. And then now I'm holding control and I can remove material when I'm clicking. Great. Okay. So I like this geometry. I think it looks fine. Let me actually add a little bit more. Uh-oh. I'm going to add a little bit more. Then I'm going to use the boundary tool B. Actually, let me move a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to use the boundary tool B in order to create this a smoother version of the, of the area that we selected. I'm going to increase the smoothness and then decrease preserve shape because the exact geometry I'm not that interested in. And then I've noticed that if I increase the iterations that we have sort of slightly better results. Now we hit accept. So now we have like a much nicer interface. I'm going to hit control G to create a face group. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create an offset. So we do that with control D. That creates an offset. And we want this offset not to be connected to the body because we're going to create an offset from this offset. And then those are going to be connected and that's going to make the socket. And in about two minutes, that statement will make sense to you. So don't worry. Okay, so I'm making a two millimeter gap between the actual prosthetic socket, pardon, the actual residual limb of the patient. Here, let me give you a better view of it. And then this offset. So you can sort of see that there's a gap here. Great. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit accept. You'll notice that I disconnected the, I, I unclicked the connected uh, uh, checkbox here. That's important. So we want to unconnect that. Now we have this other face group. So we've selected that, but you'll notice that the area under it, so it's actually, this is, it's a separate body from the rest of the, uh, of the residual limb. We're going to create an offset from that in turn with control D. So we want this offset, let's say to be, I don't know, five millimeters. Sure, and then in this case, we want it to be connected, right? So now eh, let's make it 10 millimeters, so a centimeter thick. Okay, so we're going to say accept. Now we have this nice interface, uh, but we want to make sure that the boundary at the outside, or rather at the top of the prosthetic socket, is very smooth. So we're going to select it, and then we're going to change the expansion mode to being along the crease angle. We're going to hold down control and then we're going to use the right mouse button and pull away and you'll notice that it expands to everything um, along sort of this one path but it doesn't go over onto the rest of the socket, right? And if I did it vice versa, if I click the socket and I expanded, you'll see that I've expanded to sort of the face of the socket but not the top and I want the top so we're going to do that again. If I've got the top, sometimes it misses a little bit and you can sort of just help it out. Right, did we cover everything? More or less, yes. It's always good to check these sorts of things. Okay, great. And now I'm going to change my expansion mode to being the geodesic distance. And I'm going to do the same thing. Or except in this case, I'm going to hold down control and then use my mouse wheel to slowly expand outwards a little bit. And that sort of goes all the way around that top part. Great. Okay. So now what we want to do is use the smooth tool, which we can get to with control F. And we want to increase the smoothing scale a little bit more. 
So that looks very nice. Maybe not so much. Okay, great. You'll notice that there's some errors in the mesh. Don't worry, we can fix those later. Great. Okay, so we're going to come in and fix those errors in the mesh. They don't always happen, but sometimes they do, and they're a little annoying. So first thing we're going to do is separate this body. So I clicked it, I expanded to the whole body, and then I used E to make it a different part. I'm going to rename these parts, actually. So in this case, we have the socket. It's always nice to rename your parts because it's easier to keep track of them. And then here we have the residuum. I want to hide the residuum at the moment because I only really want to work on the socket. Okay, great. So let's center around this area, and we want to sort of fix this mm, mm, geometry that we're not a big fan of, or this little error. So one way to do it is just sort of highlight the interface between it and the rest of the body. Now we have this nice little gap. We use the inspection tool with I, and then we hit Q to fix it, right? And so that sort of filled the gap. Now let's look around and see if we can find any other parts that are causing us some issues. We can, so we're going to center around them, highlight them. Really all you need is the interface between it and the rest of the body, because if you get the interface, then you can ensure that it... Uh, then you can ensure that the rest of it will be unaffected. Right, so what I, what I mean by that is, if you can make sure that the part that connects the, the part that you want and the part that you don't, uh, if you can delete those areas, then you can be confident that the parts that you don't want uh, end up not showing up. You know, that, that was a little confusing, so just watch what I do and not what I say, I suppose. Alright, so I'm just trying to get the sliver. Sometimes it gets really difficult. This is a little bit poor form. There's probably a better way of doing it, but this seems to work for me. Okay, great. So now we're going to use inspector tool, Q to accept what the inspector tool does. Uh, we're going to sort of look around the rest of the mesh. We're going to toggle away from the face groups to make sure that we're not missing anything, that the face groups are obscuring. I'm going to do a little bit of manual smoothing with the robust smooth tool, just right around here. That's quite strong. I don't like that. So undo a little bit. Great. Okay. So that's fine. Is the mesh density really high there? It's so odd. Okay. Okay, so that's fixed now. Let's just take a look at the rest of it. Okay, it's looking good. So now we can add back this guy. Okay, so now that we have the socket that's nicely fitted to our residual limb, we want to create a, we want to attach it to a standard part known as an adapter. Now here's an example of an adapter. This is a simplified version. And what we want is for the socket to be integral with this other component, such that this component can in turn uh, sort of attach to something else. The ge exact geometry of this bottom component is irrelevant. Uh, in, in, if you want to connect uh, the socket to something else, then this technique will work. Alrighty, so let's begin. The first thing we want to do is remove the top of whatever it is that you're connecting to, in this case, an adapter. Um, the next step would be to remove the bottom of the socket, and you can see that we're going to join the two. So we're going to use plane cut. Go down over here. We want to make sure that we're keeping both halves of the plane cut and that they're not being refilled. So now we see that this section has been, or this socket has been divided into two pieces, right? There's the bottom piece and there's the top piece. So we want to delete the bottom piece, right? And you'll notice that the inside of the socket, right? Let's remove the residuum so you can get a better view. The inside of the socket has also been split into two pieces. We want to, we want to close those up, right? We want to keep the inside of the socket or the part that interfaces with the residual limb to be exactly how it was before. So we're going to use the close cracks tool and that takes care of that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to combine the socket and the adapter because we want them to be one part. Then we're going to double click at their edges with the select tool sort of clean up that little, little section over there. 
Uh, and then we're going to use the join tool, which is J. This takes a little bit of time. So my computer, fortunately, is quite fast, so it doesn't take so much time, but it might be a little bit slower on your end, but don't worry. So we're going to hit accept. And then from there, we're going to use the smooth tool, control F. We're going to increase the smoothing scale, increase the number of ring constraints. Let me sort of play around with these sliders until they look appropriate. Let's do max smoothness, maybe. Hit accept. OK, so that's pretty good, but you can see that it's still a little rough on the outside. So we're going to use the smoothing tool over here. Sort of go around, smooth it, maybe make it a little bigger. And there you go. We have an adapter connected to a prosthetic socket. If you want to see what the inside looks like or what the whole thing looks like, you can see that it's sort of cradling the residual limb, which I've now displayed here. Perfect. I hope that was helpful.